It's so hot! It's so hot! And I had to turn the fan off in order for the audio to sound better. You had better be clicking the like button. Oh my god. Sorry, I broke character. Oh, it's so hot though. You know, I saw a comment last week of someone who was like, I don't like that you call us dirty potters. Do you want your intro different? Huh? Do you want- Whoa, Whoa, What's up, baby, guys? What's- dreadful. What's up? Welcome to YouTube. Button, smash oh, that like yeah. button. Today we're testing Amico. What's up? What's up? Seems a little weird. Disingenuous, even. I'm, I'm just gonna- I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, and then you keep on doing what you do. Which is still click the buttons, but you know. Today we are testing another Amico glaze from the Potter's Choice Flux line. This one is River Birch, PCF-74. In our last video, we tested Flux Blossom, and I enjoyed that one. It's the first one I picked out because it has a tinge of pink in it, and you guys know how I love the color pink. In today's video, we have a more white and creamy version of Flux. We will be testing the base, so I have a white clay body and a brown clay body here that we will be testing the base on. We also have a couple of mixtures. I'm probably going to mix these two with some of my homemade glaze because I do like to make my own glazes and test them with Amico glazes. On top of that, I am most likely going to do a couple of refires because I have some faith in this glaze that it might be able to fix the dark colors that I'm getting here. Just a little inside look into my process, I usually get about one or two refryers out of every single kiln load, so I put them to the side to see if I can refire them at a later time. I give everything about two chances before I throw it in the throwaway pile, but I think, because these are flux glazes from Amico, that they can probably get some lighter colors out of these super dark glazes that I'm getting from other glaze companies. We will also be testing this glaze with one of my dragon scale mugs here. The only difference is that I'm probably going to use the last of this Amico glaze, PC-22 Blue Stone. I feel like I should start mixing Amico glazes together with other Amico glazes, seeing that if you're watching this, you're probably buying bottled glazes. And I can't just keep on making my homemade glazes and expecting you to buy them. Especially because I do not sell my homemade glazes, really, so... I will be doing a brush on test. A lot of you in the comments below are asking for me to do a brush on test tile, but I will most likely be brushing these on solo by themselves to test the base. Before we get started with the testing, I do want to point out that today's episode is sponsored by Amico and their new Potter's Choice Flux line. Everybody say thank you, Amico. Something I want you to see before we go forward with the glazing our last products, note that there's chunks of what I can only guess are dried out glaze shards of a higher flux or a runnier glaze inside of the glaze matrix itself. I first thought that I didn't handle this correctly or something, but looking through the bottle and looking at the texture of the picture on the bottle, this seems to be purposeful. So keep these chunks of whatever they are in mind later on when we look at the product. Okay, all done glazing. So as we usually do, let's take a look at what we're putting inside of the kiln. This here is a leftover dragon scale mug that I made about a few months ago. This is PC-22 Blue Stone with the new Potter's Choice Flux on top of it. These two over here are gonna be a base glaze. So this is our white clay body, 
and this is our brown clay body for a base glaze test of the Potter's Choice Flux River Birch. I'm also, at a later time, and you'll probably see it after the product comes out, going to pour one on so that we can get a good comparison in between the brushed and the poured version. Specifically, so I can rub it in your face when the poured version comes out better, because it is. These two over here are brothers, but they're in reverse. So this is Potter's Choice Flux River Birch with June Perry's Purple on the top of it, right here. And this is in reverse. So this is June Perry's Purple as a base with the Potter's Choice Flux River Birch on the top of it. So these two right here are essentially the same exact thing, just layered opposites. Now that we're all done glazing, let's put them in the kiln. Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look. The first thing I want you to see is the test dials that I did both in and out. So I did glaze this entire thing right here with River Birch and I put a tiny bit of June Perry's Purple on the very top. Okay, this is gorgeous. It is beautiful. I want you to note two different things when you're looking at this. Number one, I just put a bit of June Perry's Purple on the very top of this after I put River Birch first. So you can clearly see that I put River Birch on the entire thing, and this is how River Birch looks by itself. Remember those tiny little specks we were looking at earlier? These are those dark spots that you're seeing right here. Those are also the dark spots that you're seeing on the inside of the cup right here as well. So that's how it naturally comes out on a white clay body all by itself. I'll let you look at the second one in a little bit, but this one is the one that I prefer way better. Now, if you look at the one where I put June Paris Purple first and then put River Birch over it, this one did not do the same job. I kind of wish that I coated the entire thing in June Paris Purple and River Birch because the spots where it did kind of go along with each other look beautiful. I, I mean, I love that a lot. I'm gonna put this all over some of my red clay bodies. You can also see the consistency of the glaze coming out by itself because I didn't layer anything on the inside of these cups. So this is how the glaze looks all by itself. It might just be me because I am not a fan of purple whatsoever. I just have five gallons of it, so I have to figure out what to do with it. But this spot right here, I want this to be the entire thing. These are both fantastic. I might give this one to one of my patrons. I might throw the, I'm not gonna lie to you, I might throw this one away and it's just me. I just, I simply do not like the color purple so much so. I, I'm not gonna, okay, look, listen. All right, little story time with Dante, okay? I had been looking for a glaze recipe that turns straight up red for the longest time, and all I could ever find are different versions of tin chrome red, which is what June Perry's purple really is. June Perry's purple and pink are really just tin chrome variations of each other. And I, because of my like two years of research and trying to fudge the numbers and figure out what goes where, I just have such a bad relationship with June Perry's purple and any tin chrome reds as people call them when they're really just different variations of purple. You know what? I'm gonna leave it to you. I'm gonna leave it to the comments below. If you want me to save it, let me know and we'll save it. Otherwise, it's going, it's going a little bit trash. This one here is a bowl glazed with only river birch on the inside and out. Everything about this says exactly what I am and who I am as a person. It's my defining trait. <sighs> it's beautiful. This is a perfect glaze in my eyes right now. This is a fantastic glaze. It look, look how it looks by itself. Look, we have these little specks here that force movement a little bit here. You have this kind of light sheen purple on the very outside of the glaze body, along with the flux attributes that come along with the glaze. I can use this by itself and, and it's fine, right? This looks beautiful as it is. But also look what it does with glazes that I don't even like, to be honest. I don't even like June Perry's Purple that much, but I mean, guess what my new batch of mugs is gonna be for my website? I'm, I'm gonna use this. I'm noticing that whenever I put this glaze on any type of red clay body, it turns a tinge blue. Let me show you.
Okay, I might have lied. When I said a tinge blue, I mean it turned extremely blue. And this is something that I notice whenever I put it with other glazes that either have a tiny bit of iron in it, or whenever I just use it on a red clay body. So this by itself is a redstone clay body, which is generally just clay with iron in it. And this right here is a white clay body, right? And you can see the complete difference in between the two. One of them essentially turned blue with the same texture and depth as this one, and this one just turned a type of light candy cotton kind of pink with a bit more texture as well. I do keep using the word texture in glaze terms, but I also mean it in the term of the actual piece itself. This has a lot of jagged edges in it, and a lot of pieces where you can kind of see it ran a little bit. I wanted to test that out to see if the piece would actually add a bit of movement with this glaze whenever I had a bunch of texture, and it did. You can see it went straight into the cracks and moved straight down. And the awesome part, the part that blows my mind, because I have trouble developing glazes like this as well, is that it didn't run. It did not run whatsoever. It, that's exactly where I put the glaze line. I remember because I brushed it off with a sponge and thought to myself, oh, that's, that's a little bit too much. But even the spots where it didn't, like, it didn't run at all. I don't know how this glaze is so stable, but it's still running at the same time. It's a beautifully developed glaze, to be honest with you. Now, as promised, I did make a poured version, which is the version that I usually do. I generally pour on the high majority of my bottle glazes, and I also made a brushed version. So this is the same exact clay body, the same exact glaze, but this one is brushed on. I do know that there is a war in between me, the content creator, and you, people who like to brush on glazes. And granted, there's a, there's a lot of bottle glaze companies that are like, you should brush it on. But almost every single glaze I've ever used from Amico, Coyote, and the like, from everybody, all my glazes have come out just better if I pour them on. It saves me time. I usually just pour it right back into the bottle after I pour it into a bucket that I pour over whenever I'm doing the product. So it's... This, to me, is better than this to me, and this is the same exact glaze. You, 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 that's up for you to decide, okay? That is up for you to decide. But I'm a potter of my word, and I promise that I would start giving you brushed on test tiles from this point on. Just don't be mad at me when they come out all disappointing. You know, the messed up thing is it doesn't actually look that bad. Like, if this was in line at the club, they'd probably, they'd probably let this guy through, no problem. Right? They'd be like, oh, it's fine. You you look good enough to not have to pay a cover fee. But standing next to this beauty, you'd be like, okay, you get in free. You might have to pay a little bit because the comparison is just so visually appealing. The last one that we're going to look at is our dragon scale mug here. And this is what I was hinting at earlier. There are certain glazes that I can put underneath this glaze that seem to make it turn blue, and especially on that of brown clay bodies. So I kind of assume that anytime you mix this glaze with anything that has a bit of iron in it, it might turn a bit more blue than not. Now there are also glazes such as this satin rebay that we layered underneath it that also kind of make it turn this blue, and it is a very, very strong blue. In fact, it seems like it made it crawl a tiny bit if you look inside the scales but that might just be my bad choice of glaze materials, to be honest with you. I personally think just from this alone and a lot of the other test styles that we got in today's video, that this glaze has a lot of potential alone or with other glazes. We just have to figure out the combinations to make that beautiful glaze. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today for the review of River Birch PCF-74 from the Amico Company. Keep in mind that today's video is sponsored by Amico with these glazes they give us. Thank you very much, Amico, for sponsoring today's video. Links down below to where you can get these glazes this is a beautiful glaze and i mean that look just by itself it makes this if it took one of my least favorite glazes and made it quite desirable i'm gonna do this combination to other things and look even if you're a brown clay potter like look look what it does look at that that's that's amazing i need to get my hands on more of this stuff because i have five gallons of june praise purple 
in my in my possession that I made, thinking like, oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be per everybody loves purple. I don't like I don't care what everybody else likes. I don't like purple, so I <laughs> I need to combine it with this glaze to make this deliciousness so that I, I can get rid of the glaze. Don't forget to click all the YouTube buttons so that YouTube doesn't river birch me in my sleep, and I'll see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage. If I'm being honest with you, I was in my own head. I was like, no, I'm not gonna give them a brush test tile. I've already proven to them on multiple video on multiple videos why it's better to just pour these on over a bucket and then pour it back in. It doesn't waste more glaze. It's 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 perfect. Like it saves so much time. I don't understand. And then my wife was like, why don't you just do a brush test tile and then like it'll be really obvious which one is superior after like 10 videos of you just showing a better product every time. And I, that's, that's not why I married her, but like that's, that's sure on the list.